Hey everyone, my name is Danielle and what am I saying? Hey everyone, my name is Danielle and I run this YouTube channel, Comfortable Spaces, where we are gonna be discussing affordable living and intentional homemaking. So for this video, I wanted to begin discussing our basement remodel. We did a DIY basement remodel into a family room. It already had a family room vibe when we bought this house almost nine years ago now, but it was not nice. The carpet was dingy. It had a bar in it that was just not useful at all. It actually cut the space in half. It cut the room in half. And we just wanted to liven up the space, get new carpet in, get some paint on the walls, and make it more functional for our family. Now how our basement originally was when we first got this house was it became the clutter room. And I know that you guys all have that room where you stick all of your junk into the room where you don't think anybody's gonna come and hang out, you don't think anybody's gonna see it, you keep all of your main level floor nice and neat and clean and organized and tidy, and then you get your junk and you throw it in this one room. And for us, originally, that's what the basement was. The basement was our junk collecting room. We had so much stuff in there. Like I said, there was a bar, and the bar became a place where we would just hide more stuff behind it that's all we ever used it for was just to hide all of our stuff and it was not functional whatsoever there was a tile floor below the bar which also cut the room in half and it made it feel so small we had one little couch in the space that was a pull-out couch that was not comfortable whatsoever and we just wanted this space to be more inviting more usable so the first thing that I had to do was declutter this entire space, and I'm not kidding guys, it took me well over a month. I gave away probably 40 bags worth of items. We were holding on to high school notebooks, like just all of this junk that we did not need anymore. So we decluttered that entire space, and then we began working on the renovation itself. So once everything was completely decluttered, the first thing that we wanted to work on was the stairwell. When we bought the home, the stairwell actually came with this beautiful beadboard on it, but it was a orangish, yellowish wood tone. And I'm not completely against wood. However, if you ask my husband, he will tell you that I am because I've painted a lot of the wood in our house. But if it's a nice color wood, I'm not, totally against it, but orange is just not my color. So we took the beadboard that already existed and we painted it white just to brighten it up, to liven it up. And the walls, they were originally white, but I like to call them smokers white. You know that white that is uh, almost dingy yellow uh, kind of on the outside of it? That was the tone of white that was originally in our basement. So we took that orangey yellowy beadboard and we painted it a white. We painted it this color polar bear white from Bear, which is a Home Depot brand. We get a lot of our paint from Home Depot, not all of our paint, but a lot of it. And we have used the color polar bear on all of the trim that we have painted in the house. You can see this, this trim here, our stairwell here, all of that is the polar bear color from the Bear, B-E-H-R. Um, brand. Oh, and before we put the paint on, the very first thing we did was we put a layer of Kills, K-I-L-Z, as a base coat underneath the paint so that the wood grain wouldn't bleed through the paint and destroy the look of the white once it was fully painted. So we did that first, and then we painted the walls a color called Misty Coast. Misty Coast um, is also from Bear, from the Home Depot line and it is just this beautiful kind of bluish green color. You'll see if I take you through the different rooms in our house, there is a lot of beachy tones. That is definitely my color palette are those beautiful beach tones. I believe the color of our living room is called Frozen Pond. And I just love those kind of bluish greenish colors that just really accent a room and make it feel like a breath of fresh air. That's sort of my style, my vibe. So once we painted the entire stairwell, we ended up buying a cute little bench from HomeSense and put a peg rack up on the one wall because our door to the backyard is right there and it allowed us to put our shoes on, a place to keep our shoes, our jackets, so we could go outside, 
play. Um, my son loves to play outside every day or go outside to walk our dog. So that's where we keep a lot of that stuff and some of my son's toys. It's a great landing pad for heading on out and it just has such a beautiful vibe to it now. The last thing we did in the stairwell was we stained the railings that came with the house. Again, they had that orangey tone wood, so we decided to stain them a darker wood to match the doors that we did in the lower part of the basement. Once we got into the main level of the basement, we ended up ripping up the carpet and the tile that the bar was on. We pulled the bar out. We, we love to upcycle as much as possible, so we sold our old TV stand, our old couch, and the bar all on Facebook Marketplace, which is one of my very first tips of how to keep your budget low when you are DIYing a space. It's great if you want to get new items to be able to sell your old items on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Craigslist, any of those places, and use that money to then put into the purchase price of all the new items that you're going to be buying for that space. So that is 100% what we did. We made a nice chunk of cash on selling these items online and then we took that and we put that into the main purchase for this space which was the carpet. The carpet, old carpet, was dirty and dingy and gross and we needed to rip it up. So we ripped it up and we purchased a brand new beautiful kind of tannish brown colored carpet to go into that space. It had a very nice thick pile on it so that it would be really cozy. And the one thing we decided not to skimp on, even though we tried to keep our budget low for this renovation, was we went with a memory foam pad underneath our carpet. For those of you who have never gotten your carpet redone before, you need to purchase a pad that the carpet then sits on in between the flooring. I think you always have to purchase that, but maybe you don't, but I really think you do. So we purchased this memory foam specific pad because we knew it was going to go on concrete and we wanted um, something to really absorb our footsteps. We knew that our son was going to be playing down there and we wanted the ability to have a really comfortable space for people to walk around and enjoy and sit on the floor and not feel like you were sitting on a basement floor but really have it be a nice family room space. So that is something we did not skimp on and honestly compared to the regular carpet it really wasn't or the regular carpet pad it really wasn't that much of a huge difference so I was really really grateful that we did that and honestly it is one of the number one things people comment on when they come downstairs because when you enter a basement space you're expecting to feel the concrete under your feet you're expecting to have it kind of be harder when you're walking and it's not at all it's super cozy my son and his friends have crawled all over this carpet they love it they think that it's so much fun and they they're really comfortable when they're down there as well while we were taking up the carpet we also decided to save money on the trim by just pulling up the old trim and again repainting it so my husband was very very careful of pulling off all the old trim from around the doors from the floor all over that it already existed and honestly, this entire uh, detail work of the trim, which I find different trims and moldings and crown molding, all that to be such a game changer in a space, we did that super easy by just taking off the old trim and repainting it instead of replacing it. So that helped us to save a nice chunk of money as well. All it costed was another coat of paint. So once my husband had repainted all of the trim, we just reattached that once the carpet was installed. And one of my biggest tips for making trim look more professional is to make sure that you get a good caulk, a nice white color that matches the trim or whatever color trim you're doing. And make sure you're caulking any gap that might be made. There are always gaps when we're attaching things in this house because our house was built in 1913, so it's over 100 years old. It's so funky and quirky. It 
tilts in certain areas and if you really look at things it's not level at all so doing things like putting the trim in and whatnot there's always bound to be some sort of a gap between the trim and the wall so we made sure we went through and caulked every ounce of that trim so that it looked perfectly flush to the wall absolutely beautiful it looks professional my husband is absolutely a stickler for detail Sometimes that makes me crazy because it makes a project last for, I don't know, six or seven months. But when it is done, it is absolutely beautiful. I'm so grateful that he is a stickler, even though I am somebody who will push through something quickly to get it done, maybe doesn't look as good as if he were to do it because he just makes everything look phenomenal. Okay, so once we had the bar out, what we wanted to do was put in a feature wall. This was 100% my husband Josh's idea. He is all about having a feature wall, having like a different color. I'm not really super big on having multiple colors in a space. I know that that was like a super 90s trend and I absolutely had multiple color walls in my bedroom when I was a teenager. But as an adult, I feel more cohesive, more at peace when every single wall in a space is the same color. But I don't mind having something funky as a feature wall. So my husband suggested doing a wood palette wall, not your traditional shiplap like a lot of people do, even though I have nothing wrong with shiplap. I think it's beautiful. But he wanted to do a dark wood wall. So we found these beautiful beautiful pieces of engineered hardwood from Home Depot. They were already roughed up in all the best ways and we found them in two different sizes. So what we ended up doing was connecting the tongue and groove to the larger piece and the smaller piece so that the smaller piece kind of popped out a little bit and really built a dimension that was super fun, super cool on this wall. And I absolutely love how it came out. So what we started with was Josh would put the wood on the floor and apply liquid nails to the back of that, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is really, really hard cement liquid nails. And we would push that up on the wall and then he would take a nail gun and nail the different boards into place so that it fit beautifully. And we kind of flipped back and forth between the larger pieces and the smaller pieces. And I absolutely love how the wall came out. It looks stunning. These pieces of wood, I think the larger pieces cost around $12 a board and the smaller pieces cost around $8 a board. So for just over a hundred bucks, we had this beautiful feature wall for such an inexpensive price. I love how it came out and it really helps to accent this little cove where the bar used to be, but then we decided to put our couch in. So we love it, it looks stunning. Once all the walls were painted, everything looked lovely. I then put a nice coat of a flat white ceiling paint on the ceiling, again, just to freshen it up, just to liven it up, to make the whole space really come together and look well done. We got the flat white paint at Sherwin-Williams for about 20 bucks, super cheap ceiling paint, really cost us absolutely nothing and it was such a great way to just freshen up the space. You don't realize how much ceiling paint will do to a space until you add it up there and all of a sudden like years of dinginess of your ceiling just experiencing all of the things that like goes on with your normal life um, how much that clears it up cleans it up and makes it look so nice so the last diy thing that we did before we really got into just furnishing the area was we redid all of the doors there are five doors down in our basement which is kind of crazy because our basement is not a very large space um, but we decided that we wanted to take two of the doors and restain them. All the doors were orange. That orange yellow wood it was super popular in the 90s. I'm pretty sure that's when this basement had originally gotten redone. But we took all of the doors off and we decided to paint 
three of them the polar bear white because they were kind of all in a cove corner all looking at each other one two three and we didn't want to make them the dark stain because we wanted to make sure that that space didn't feel like a cave or too dark but then we took the other two doors that face into the space and we stained them a dark wood that matched the the wood feature wall so that everything sort of flowed very nicely. Josh painstakingly sanded every ounce of those doors down and then put, I believe, two to three coats of stain on them to really make them look nice. The doors became this beautiful chocolatey brown, but there's still some texture coming through them. So it's not just a solid color of brown. There's a lot of knots coming through. Some of the old orange still kind of seeped through, but it looks neat. I really enjoyed how it all came together. And I'm really excited for how this all looks. So I love that we were able to redo the doors in this way between the paint and the stain because then we didn't have to purchase new doors. We could just redo those. And then I purchased just new knobs, new hardware, for them to make them look brand new without putting out really any crazy amount of money. I believe we got the hardware from, it was either Amazon or Home Depot, maybe Lowe's. Did I mention, I did not mention this, but we did this remodel three years ago, so I'm trying to remember where we got everything from. I will do my best to link where we got everything from in the description below, so you can find those pieces for yourself if you're interested in remodeling your space and using some of them. But I love the oil brushed bronze look. I just think it's such a fun look. We definitely got them from Lowe's. We definitely got them from Lowe's. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I love, love, love how the oil brush bronze um, look kind of goes. I also started to use that in my kitchen as well. So we replaced all of the knobs instead of having to replace any of the doors and it just really helped to liven up the space, make it look super new without having to spend a lot of money on it, on those pieces. And I believe each set of hardware cost us maybe around $18 a piece for the knobs and the, the hardware pieces. And the very last thing that we did to finish out this space was we added all of the furniture. We did buy a brand new couch, which was only the second major purchase. The first major purchase we made for the space was the carpet, and the second major purchase was the couch. And the couch we got from Ashley Furniture, and it is a dupe of the cloud couch from Restoration Hardware. It is so comfortable. It is pillows. Come on. Hello. Oh. It is loveliness. It is so snuggly. It is the best place to just lay back and watch a movie and enjoy. And one of the things that I really loved about this couch is that it's module. So you can actually move the pieces around. So our we purchased a five piece couch, a five module piece couch. And um, one of those pieces is considered an ottoman, but you can use it as an ottoman or you can place it at the end of the couch, which is where it kind of hangs out long term, like through our everyday living or you can actually take it and move it into where the L shape of the module couch is and um, make it almost like a double sized bed, which is what we now use as our guest space when we have family come and stay with us. It's an easy way to make a nice large bed in there. They have that whole downstairs space to themselves, nice big TV, nice place to relax. And like I said, the couch is super comfortable. We will do like family movie nights down there. We will hang out sometimes, have slumber parties if it gets too hot upstairs we'll all sleep downstairs on the couch it's super cozy I absolutely love it I highly recommend it and one of the other things that I want to recommend for affordable shopping when it comes to remodeling and DIYing a space is do all of your major purchases on the fab five holidays this is what I've deemed the fab five so what those holidays are are New Year's Day President's Weekend Memorial Day, 
4th of July and Labor Day. I don't know why those five days are super big in the like furniture and kind of construction-y space, but they always are. You're always gonna find fantastic deals when you are going for a large purchase um, on those days. So this couch, for example, when we walked into Ashley Furniture, this couch was originally $2,500. And because it was uh, Memorial Day weekend when we went to purchase the couch, it was, uh, I believe, 40 or 50% off. But if you don't know this, Ashley also has a matching policy. So if you can find the couch online, even if the place that you find it online is like a million states away, if you can find it online for a cheaper price, they will match the price that you bring in that is cheaper. So we ended up doing that because another company had the same couch on sale for an even better price. So I believe at the end of the day, that this $2,500 couch, we ended up only paying about $950 for when all is said and done. We thought it was a phenomenal deal, an amazing bargain for a five piece L-shaped couch that's so cozy and so comfortable. So there is a great tip and great hack for trying to stay in your budget, stay well below budget when you are building a space and trying to um, make everything cozy and comfortable. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because we're going to continue to be talking about affordable living and intentional homemaking. So I hope to see you back on our channel really, really soon. Have a great day.